وَإِن تَعْجَبْ فَعْجَبٌ قَوْلُهُمْ أَيْذَا كُنَّا تُرَابًا أَيْنَّا لَفِي خَلْقٍ جَدِيدٍ أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَئِكَ الْأَغْلَالُ فِي أَعْنَاقِهِمْ وَأُولَئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ It's not even an issue of Asha'ira are there as well. It's, it's clear. It's Ahlul Sunnah and the Jahmi and the Mu'tazila. So we have now Ibn al-Qattan al-Fasi who narrates in his book Al-Iqna' fi Masail al-Ijma' he said wa ajma'u ala على الإيمان بأن الشيطان تتخبط من من بني آدم من سلطان الله عليه كما شاء وكيف شاء. They had consensus in iman that the shaitan causes the children of Adam, touches them, possesses them, causes them to become to have insanity as from the sultan of Allah, from the authority of Allah, as he wills and however he wills. Uh, Ibn al Munayyir also mentioned واعتقاد السلف. وأهل السنة أن هذه الأمور على حقائقها واقعة كما أخبر الشرع عنها. These matters that so the, the Salaf and Ahl Sunnah they had consensus that these are real things that happen mm. and they happen the way that the Sharia the way that Allah Azza wa Jalla the Sharia tells us they happen. ومن ذلك السحر وخبطة الشيطان. From that is magic and the possession of the Shaytan. Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah رحمه الله تعالى he said وجود الجن ثابت بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم واتفاق سلف الأمة وإمتها كذلك دخول الجن في بدن الإنسان ثابت باتفاق أئمة أهل السنة والجماعة. He said the existence of the jinn is proven by the book of Allah and the Sunnah and the agreement of the Salaf of the Ummah and their Imams. And likewise, the jinn entering into the body of the person is proven by the agreement of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'a. He also said, وليس في أئمة المسلمين من ينكر دخول الجن في بدن المصروع ومن أنكر ذلك وادعى أن الشرع يكذب ذلك فقد كذب على الشرع وليس في الأدلة الشرعية ما ينفي uh, ذلك He said that there is none of the imams of the Muslims who deny that the jinn enter the body of the person who is afflicted not and whoever say whoever denies this and claims that the sharia denies this mm. has lied against the sharia because there is nothing in the evidences of the sharia that deny this he also said وقد اتفق عليه أئمة الإسلام كما اتفقوا على وجود الجن. He said that imams of Islam agreed upon this like they agreed upon the existence of the jinn. He then said ولهذا أنكر طائفة من المعتزلة. He said there's a group of the Mu'tazila who denied this and he mentioned um, Jubai and he mentioned Abu Bakr al-Razi. And that's why I have a, I have a doubt about Fakhr al-Din al-Razi. Because Fakhr al-Din al-Razi, his madhab, his madhab aqadi is well known. And it's very surprising to see him deny this. And I wonder whether they and I would have to go back into that quote, yani, but I wonder whether the quote was supposed to be from Abu Bakr al-Razi, which is who Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentions. وَغَيْرِهِمَا دُخُولَ الْجِنْ فِي بَدَنَ الْمَصْرُوعِ Then he said, وَلِهَذَا ذَكَرَ الْعَشَرِي فِي مَقَالَاتَ أَهْلِ السُنَّةِ He mentions the quote of Al-Ash'ari. وَقَالَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بْنَ أَحْمَدِ بْنَ حَنْبَلْ قُلْتُ لِي أَبِي And Abdullah ibn Ahmed ibn Hanbal said, I said to my father, إِنَّ قَوْمًا يَزْعُمُونَ أَنَّ الْجِنِّ لَا يَدْخُلْ فِي بَدَنَ الْإِنْسِ There are some people who have the false impression that the jinn doesn't enter the body of a man. فَقَالَ يَا بُنَيْ يَكْذِبُونَ He said, O oh my son, they are lying. هُوَ ذَا يَتَكَلِّمُ عَلَى لِسَانِ It's he's the one who speaks upon that person. This is Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. Imam, Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. We still have more. Just one point I just want to mention here as well is a side benefit. Some people they might bring this as a contention, or they might say that Imam Ahmed Allah's quote was mentioned by Ibn Taymiyyah. Okay, that's bias of you guys to do that. Um, no, it's actually been transmitted by Ibn Hajar al Haytimi in his Fatawa al Hadithiyah as well, who doesn't necessarily agree with Shaykh al Islam mm. Taymiyyah. So, uh, on many issues. So he transmitted the statement of Imam Ahmed and I think you might have the quote mm. of what he said. He said hey. that this is the madhab of Ahl Sunnah uh, after he brought the statement of uh, hey. Imam Muhammad. He said, فَدُخُولُهُ فِي بَدَنِهِ وَمَذْهَبُ أَهْلِ السُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَعَةِ This Adam. is Ibn Hajar al-Haytim. He said in Fatawa al-Hadithiyah. Muhyiddin Sheikh Zad, he said, 
إن أهل السنة يعتقدون بأن الشيطان يمس الإنسان ويتخبطه ويسبب له الجنون وأن له تأثيرا في بعض أجسام الناس He said أهل السنة believe they have the aqeedah that the shaytan touches a person and causes him insanity and makes him to go crazy, makes him go insane and that he has an effect on some people's bodies. We mentioned Ibn Hajar al-Haytami. Uh, Al-Alusi also mentions وَاَتِقَادُ السَّلَفُ salaf wa ahli sunnah أَنَّمَا دَلَّتْ عَلَيْهِ أُمُورٌ أَنَّمَا دَلَّتْ عَلَيْهِ أُمُورٌ حَقِيقَةٌ وَاقِعَةٌ He said the belief of the salaf and ahli sunnah is that what this indicates, this ayah indicates is a reality which actually happens. Mm. And then he mentions the people who make ta'wil of it. He said that they are, nobody made ta'wil of it إلا المعتزلة ومن هذا حذوه The one, the people who followed them. وبذلك ونحو خرجوا عن قواعد الشرع القوين فاحذروا قاتلهم الله أن يفكون He said nobody take this false interpretation except the Mu'tazila and those who followed them and by this they went out of the principles of the Sharia so be careful of them قاتلهم الله may Allah fight them how they were deceived and Siddiq, uh, Siddiq Hassan Khan he also narrated with regard to this he said ومن خلق الله الشياطين وَلَهُمْ لَمَّةُ شَرٍ لِبْنِ آدَمْ They have a possession that they cause to the children of Adam. وَتَصَرُّ فِيهِمْ And they can, they can have a control over them. فِيهِمْ وَتَجْرِ مِنْ إِبْنِ آدَمْ مَجَرَ الدَّمْ And that they flow through the person like the blood. وَنَقَلَ غَيْرُ وَاحِدِ اتِّفَاقُ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ عَلَى ذَلِكَ And more than one person narrated the agreement of all of the people of knowledge on this. These are quotes after okay. quotes after quotes bringing us consensus on the issue. There's one point I I, I, I I want us to really focus on is that the ijma' here is that the jinn can enter the human body. And there's also an ijma' on the ayah of الذين يأكلون الربا لا يقومون إلا كما يقوم الذي تخبطه الشيطان من المس. So we have that this ayah, this is what it means. You can't give me any other interpretation. And also the aqwal of the a'immatu al-Islam of different, different backgrounds. It's not just hmm. Ibn Taymiyyah and his madhab. That some may s- try to say. This is actually something that Ibn Taymiyyah was preceded in. Al Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, said it. Mufassirin of the Quran, the scholars who've done tafsir of the Quran, the exegesis of the Quran, the scholars who explained Bukhari and Muslim and Abi Dawood and Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah and Nasa'i. If we sat down to really read the quotes of all of the ulama and some Shaykh Muhammad has, it's enough to. Make the whole halaqa just based on quotes. Mm. Finish next quote, next quote. But there is something I wanted to bring to the table uh, just to get this issue a bit going to another direction as well. Mm. That is, the ayah, an i'tirad was brought by a group of people, of course. They said that this ayah can be opposed by what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say that the person who's possessed in this dunya? Is equivalent. I mean, the way that the person who the jinn enters him in his dunya, uh, and the way that the jinn possesses him, that's similar to how it's going to be for the one who eats riba, the day of judgment. So, the, the, you're, so we're saying that this ayah is talking about something which is seen, which is the jinn possession in this world. It's something which is seen, and uh, the one who eats riba or takes riba is going to be like that the day of judgment. They, they bought an i'tirad of the ayah in Surah Safat, of course, that probably known to you, Sheikh, that Allah wa ta'ala, he says, طَلْعُهَا كَأَنَّهُ رُؤُوسُ الشَّيَاطِينَ That the uh, Jahannam, when Allah is talking about uh, إِنَّهَا شَجَرَةٌ تَخْرُجُ فِي أَصْلِ الْجَحِيمِ طَلْعُهَا كَأَنَّهُ رُؤُوسُ الشَّيَاطِينَ Zaqoom, when Allah is talking about the tree in Jahannam, he mentions that the thamara, uh, the branches and the seeds that come from this tree, it's like the head of the shayateen. Mm. And no one's actually seen the shayateen. It's not something we've seen. So the jinn possession also is something that's not seen. It doesn't exist. We've not seen it. How do we respond to that ayah in, in this particular issue? Mm. I'm taking your role. Yeah, I'm thank taking you. Your that here, though, I think that what you said was very profound. Something not seen and something that doesn't exist are two different things. Mm -hmm. That's in one valley and that's in another. Something that's Mm -hmm. not seen Mm -hmm. versus something that doesn't exist. To me here, 
وي رؤوس الشياطين شياطين اكزيست الشياطين لهم رؤوس they have heads صح it's something that exists صح likewise this we, I mean the, the scholars of tafsir is enough to finish the argument but before that the, the whole issue of this atkhabut min al mas is something which exists it's not something which doesn't exist something that has an, it has an existence as we have proven from the statements of the scholars of tafsir from the ahadith that came uh, confirming that and approving that and then some of the other ayat which indicate it indicate it as well so here i the fact that it the fact that it is something that uh, is something that exists and the fact that it's something that is known to people mm-hmm. is not a comparison you're making of something that nobody has any idea what it is even to the point that uh, people described it yani people describe even to the point we call, when we quote Ibn Hazm with that issue of al-mushahada is something that people see with their own eyes but and the sharia doesn't require us to deny what our own eyes see especially when it's supported by ijma that's I fine do you have any perhaps you have more to add to, to that yeah i mean we have to we have to understand this quran and the sunnah is in the arabic language allah says wa inna la tanzilu rabbil alamin nazala bihi ar-ruh al-amin ala qalbika litakuna min al-mundhirin bi lisan arabiy mubin the Quran is in the Arabic language. And so when an ayah comes like that, we have to go back to, mm. of course, the aqwal of the mufassirin and what they said, and also be deeply rooted in understanding the Arabic language. Mm. What has taken place here? And the ayah, sorry, not the ayah, sorry, the ayah, طلعوها كأنه رؤوس الشياطين, this ayah. What's taken place here is something known as tashbih. Allah wa ta'ala is mm. comparing two things. Okay. Yeah. And there's a science referred to as ilmul balagha, I'm a balagha, which is eloquency. And that science, they say it breaks into three branches. It breaks into ilmul bayan, ilmul badi' and ilmul ma'ani. And great scholars have written books on it. One of the greatest books that are written in it is the Kitab Uqudul Jumal by Jalaluddin al suyuti A thousand line poetry on uh, balagha. This issue of Tashbih, comparing two things with one another, falls under ilmul bayan. Ilmul bayan is broken into three as well. It's a tashbih, al isti'ara, and al kinaya. So tashbih is one of the three in ilmul bayan, which is comparing two things together. And there's four pillars that it has its mushabbah, wal mushabbahu bi, or that tashbih, wa wajhu shabbah. These are the four things in summary. Anyways, Allah wa ta'ala here is comparing. Shajarat al Zakum as uh, comparing it to Ru'us al Shayateen. So the Atirad here, mm. the opposition and the contention here is that Ru'us al Shayateen, it's something which is not seen. Yeah. Sheikh Muhammad mentioned it. Not seen doesn't mean it doesn't exist. That's okay. a very strong point. Fine. That's one. Secondly, is, is this something that was known by the Arabs? Pre, you know, is this something they did? Is this, is this a way they used to talk? Or is this randomly the Quran is the only one that uses it like this? Mm. But then he, the way he describes it with the feigns of a ghul, a ghul is not something the Arabs have actually seen. Yeah. So the tashbih here, the ayah is using. Huh? Yeah, here I just want to mention that the ghul is one of the types of the one of the types of the jinn. Yeah. One of the things we didn't cover earlier on, which I just had a few notes on, just the to names, make it clear, different, names the different names of the jinn. But yeah. just very briefly, Ibn Abdul Bar mentioned some of the names of the jinn. He said, well, jinnu inda ahl kalami wa ahl al-ilmi bil-lisani yanzilun ala maratib. There's different levels of the jinn. فَإِذَا ذَكَرُوا وَاحِمْ مِنَ الْجِنْ خَالِسًا قَالُوا جِنِّي If they just mention one of them, they would say, it's a jinni. Okay. وَإِذَا رَادُوا أَنَّهُ مِمَّنْ يَسْكُنُ مَعَ النَّاسِ قَالُوا عَامِر If they said he's one of the jinn that live with people, they call him Amir. Hmm. Then he said, وَإِنْ كَانَ مِمَّنْ يَعْرِضُ لِلصِّبْيَانِ قَالُوا أَرْوَاحِ that if he's one of the ones that displays himself in front of children and makes the children scared, they used to call him arwah. فَإِنْ خَبُثَ وَتَعَرَّمَ فَهُوَ شَيْطَانِ If he becomes obstructive and evil and filthy, then we, they call it shaitan. فَإِنْ زَادَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ فَهُوَ مَارِدْ Anything more than that, they would call it marid, shaitanun, marid. And anything more than that, they would call it ifrit. Uh, فَإِنْ زَادَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ وَقَوِيَ أَمْرُهُ قالوا عفريت. They would say that عفريت. And from the Marasil of Al-Hasan bin Muhammad is that he, he, said he mentioned here ولا صفر ولا غول ولكن السعالي. So from the other three names that we had is uh, Al-Ghul, the Ghul, and they believe that it take the people away from the road and it would cause the people to come lost and die in the desert. 
and as Sa'ali, which Al-Khattabi said about it, as Sa'ali Saharatul Jinn, the jinn that performs Sihr. So these are all names of the jinn that were mm, existed. But do you know that the jinns do snatch people, that's authentically transmitted in our text. Snatches in what, what sense? What do you mean mm. by snatch? Bayhaqi narrated in his Sunan, in the time of Umar radiallahu anhu, bisanad in Sahih, an authentic chain, that the time of Umar radiallahu anhu, a man was away from his wife for four years. Hmm. And the man, the woman kept waiting, 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 waiting. And she's like, where is my husband? Where's my husband? Where's my husband? Where's my husband? Where's my husband? And he never came. And Umar radiallahu anhu said, well, wait to the woman. Wait, wait. Four years when it reached, he said, now you can go and get married. As soon as she got married, a while went by, her husband came. Where were you? Where did you go? He got, I got snatched hmm. by a group of jinns. They snatched me and they took me. And I was arrested and kept by a group of them. And Allah made them fight one another. They fought between themselves. And I got saved by the ones who took over. They let me go. And this is even transmitted in the nusus of the Kutub al-Sunnah. Okay. For example, the jinns that came to the Prophet Jinnatul and they're the best jinns. They're the most honorable jinns that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. Jinnatul Nasibin, when they came to the Prophet Sallallahu the Sahabas first said that the Prophet ﷺ went missing. We couldn't find him. And we thought to ourselves, he got snatched by the ghul and the jinns, they snatched him. And the Prophet ﷺ returned and he said, I had a conversation with mm-hmm. Jinnatul Nasibin. And, and the ayah. I'm even thinking of the narration, Inna li shaytani intisharan wa khatfa. The shaytan spreads out at the time of Maghrib and snatches. Mm-hmm. Snatches people. people. I, do, I do have a question on the line of poetry you mentioned because you said when we were talking about the ayah, it's still something that exists. And again, you said the ghoul is something that exists. Do the fangs of the ghoul exist? That's my question. Yeah. I mean, first of all, there were those people who, when they commented on this, they said that the ghoul here is that he's comparing it to the fangs of the snake. Because in the first place, that that's the appearance they believed that it took. And in the ghoul, it takes the appearance of the snake. So not only did many of them claim to have seen the ghoul, whether that be true or not, but it was something well, well known among them, among mm. the Jahili Arabs, that they had, that it was an image that was not unknown. Like Ru'us al-Shayateen was an image that was not unknown to people. And it's something that they had an Ibn understanding Ab- of. Ab- Abdul Rahman Ismail al-Hiri mentions, they saw the jinns, which is right, they did. They saw it not in its original form. The wall that they're referring to is what we believe that the jinn yatashakkal. Mm. It can change forms. And it become a wasp, it can become a, a, a mm. snake, so what they saw... And, and Shaykh, maybe we mentioned from the Sunnah, yeah, for, from this, the hadith of Abi Hurairah, for example, mm. regarding the, the Sadaqah, sahih. when the Prophet ﷺ said, Sadaqah wa huwa kawdub, the shaytan, this is the shaytan. We have uh, other, we have the hadith, we have the ayah, in, in, in Surah Al... Uh, the ayah, in Surah Al... Uh, in Surah Al Anfal. Um, in the battle, in the battle... Yeah, in the battle of Suraqah ibn Malik, in yeah. Ju'sham. Sahih, sahih. When, when he, he uh, started uh, to yell out and pretend to be him. There's many yeah. nusus. So, so, and, and this Surah Malik coming in the form. And we have the hadith regarding the, uh, the snakes in Medina, that indeed in Medina there are from among the, the jinn. So that if you want, you, you give them three days, of, uh, three days of warning. These are all from the evidences of the, that this is not something we're just coming up with, that, okay. the, that the jinn have the ability to change uh, to change form. Um, sorry, Sheikh, I interrupted you on that. I just wanted to make that clear. No, that yeah, it was so something you came that just came up with right now. Yeah, so it's 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 it's, it's the concept that the no, Masha points you, but was very very. very <laughs> Stop it! Very uh, I, went, I, I went. I went. I interrupted you because I was thinking they're gonna think right right now that th- this idea of, of coming into a form, but Subhanallah. This and some scholars actually ships. believe that Talaqah can know also Shayatin is actually a tree that they believed existed, that they called. Ru'usu shayateen, the tree was called Ru'usu shayateen. The point is that Talhu ha'ka anna Ru'usu shayateen is Qubhuha. Allah is talking to them by telling them the way that people, when they, the way they perceive shaytan is something ugly. If you told somebody to draw a picture of shaytan right now, he'll draw the ugliest thing mm-hmm. ever. And the people think of the angels to be something, a creation that's beautiful. Allah says in the Quran, مَا لِهَذَا بَشَرَ مَا هَذَا بَشَرَ إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا مَلَكٌ كَرِيمٌ That when Nabi Allah Yusuf, Sawahibu Yusuf, they said, this is not a human being. This is an angel. Not just any angel, by the way. Malakun, Kareem. So, 
This is an idea that's can, like stuck to people's mind, which is that the jinns are actually the shaitan are ugly, and the jinns are beautiful. So when Allah says, the angels, the angels, the angels sorry, uh, the, Allah Taala here is trying to tell them that the ugliness of the uh, the tree of shajarat uh, al-zakun, how ugly it is, okay. the way it looks. Okay. Uh, I want to move away from the evidences now and and start talking about the implications. On, on that, but did you God. get the point about the fangs of the the ghul, That like if they they compare it to the fangs of a snake, mm. but even in the hadith we would say the hadith of Sahih Muslim, Sahih Muslim from the hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri regarding the jinn of Medina, regarding the uh, the uh, the snake, فَأَذِنُهُ uh, ثَلَاثَ أَيَامٍ give him a warning for three days. فَإِنْ بَدَأَ لَكُمْ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ فَقْتُرُ فَإِنَّمَا هُوَ الشَّيْطَانُ if it appears to you after that, then kill it for it's a shaitan. So this is also not something that was imaginary. What Ibn Qais is mentioning, this anyabi uh, aghwali, is something also that they they uh, they had a clear idea of what it meant. Even then, even though I do I do think that that argument in the first place is not it's not really needed to prove the point because the point can be proved through the ijma, through the ahadith, the ayat, and through the scholars of tafsir and their ijma on the meaning of the ayah. But just as a Sort of point of benefit or a secondary point, just to you know further. So it's, 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 it's not known in the Arabic language at that time, in the Quran or outside the Quran, that ever would be a comparison would be made for something. That I don't. Exist. I think it's a big statement to say never okay. in the Arabic language, and I don't think we need to say that. I think we can simply say that it's not in Surah Al-Baqarah. In Surah Safa, it's very clear what the intended meaning is, and that has been explained very clearly. And even in the the, the, the example that we gave. Uh, of Imr Qais and his poetry, it's also extremely clear what is meant, and it's it's clear it's something that exists, and it's not something. But the entire Arabic language, that's a big uh, okay. big statement to make. And also, I just wanted to add on that if we say that, for example, Talwa ka anur also shayatin is something that's not known. Allah is just talking, but it doesn't just it's there. It's just nothing. We don't know it. Then a concept that goes against what we believe is that the Quran can't just have words which are like that. They don't have no meaning that we can't mm. connect to, and we can't. The, the Quran has every word in the Quran and every thing in the Quran has a meaning. Some that which we do know what its meaning are, mm. some we don't have its meaning. But it doesn't mean there's no meaning. Uh, there are some things in the Quran we look at and we say, you know, Allah kept this knowledge for himself. Lakin the in other remaining verses in the Quran, it's the, the, the tashabu here is tashabu nisbi. A group of people know, a group of people don't know. Mm. So the word tal'uha ka'anna ru'usu shayateen is known to us, what it means. Um, and the poet, he said, tawatur sabi alayhi ajma'u wa lam yakun fil wahi hashfun yaqa'u wa lam yakun fil wahi hashfun yaqa'u They can't come in the revelation hashfu. Hashu is something that doesn't have a meaning, something that's just tossed and it's just mm. abandoned. We, we don't have that in the to, in the in the text. Okay. Everything has a meaning. That's very relevant when we talk about the Ayn Surah Al Baqarah. Yes, I hear. It's not just you know taqabbat wa shaitan min al mess. Just something that mm. like has no meaning. Mm -hmm. like it's it's something real. It's real. So mm -hmm. it has a meaning to us. We we understand it. We can relate to. We can see these people the way they are. And no one wants to be that like, like that. And I, there's many ayat. Allah says, Ya ladina amanu. إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونا تتهل كل مرضعة عما أرطات وتضع كل ذات حمل حملة وترى الناس سكارى وما هم سكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد الله سبحانه هول the whole and the the severity and the, the how the day of judgment is and the people are here drunk and their mother is given miscarriage and we all know this miscarriage we know what it is we know how drunk people are like they can't stand up you know they're falling they're all over the place قيامة the people are going to be like that now we're scared mm. we know what it is Possession is something no one likes. We can see the way it, it, it makes a person become. So if you take riba, that's the way you're going to seem like the Day of Judgment. We need to be scared. So these are, it's to make us fear for Allah, Allah Azza wa Jalla and, mm. and stay away from. Another benefit I took from Ibn al-Qayyim, he mentions in his da'at dawa, and he also mentions it in his kitab, Madarij al sadiqin is that the relationship between jinn possession and sinning. Okay. Because riba is one of the major sins. Uh, and the uh, concept of jinn possession and how they're interconnected. And you know, when a person puts their guard down and doesn't protect himself, doesn't do his adhkar and doesn't, you know, do what is needed from him, that this in the dunya is possession for them as well. So the riba, Ibn al Qayyim says, is a representation of major sins. Mm, I see. And the jinn possession is in this dunya.
Mm-hmm. This is one of the benefits that he, Rahimullah, extracted. Mm-hmm. Those who follow you and those that go under you. Shaitan now has control over them. Where he wants, what he wants to do to them and how he wants to treat them is under his wing. Okay. I, I do want to talk about some of the implications of jinn possession mm-hmm. existing okay. in the world. Yeah. So you mentioned that uh, the jinn, like the human beings, are mukallaf, meaning that we're held accountable for what we do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How do we reconcile this now that I'm going to be held accountable for all of my actions and suddenly we're saying that somebody else can take control of my body and maybe help mm. me or um, guide me to doing actions that I don't really want to do in mm. the first place? I think we, we've probably touched upon that quite, quite well before. And I think there's probably two things in summary we can say here. I think first of all we can say that uh, the standard or the norm in jinn possession is not that the person, certainly not 24 hours a day, from a pure experience point of view, you cannot. It's just not the case that people become one hundred percent zombies that just are, you know, walking around the earth with no concept of what they're doing and where they've gone. That's something that, if it exists, it is extremely rare. It's nadir. It's not something which is the norm. And the second thing that we said is backing that up. That point. Hadith of Uthman ibn As. Exactly. Praying. Definitely. Yes. And something appeared to me in my salah. That's the that's the norm. Now, if we say that this exists, that there are some people who 24-7 have no consciousness of what they are doing, then surely those people come under the hadith that we talked about, the hadith of Aisha. It's also narrated from Ali ibn Abi Talib. It's in the, the, the four sunan from one or the other. Rufi al Qalam and Salas. The pen is lifted from three. That is something which is normal, even in, we're not talking about jinn possession. We have many uh, situations, even it's mentioned with regard to Ruqya Shari'i, I'm sure we're going to, inshallah, ta'ala talk about in the future episode of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri regarding the person that was insane. There was, there was a person who was afflicted by insanity. Insanity is something which happens. And I don't think insanity, leave jinn possession aside, insanity and taklif don't have a problem together. The fact that there is Someone who could be insane, medical problems, psychological issues, mm. temporarily, permanently. That's something accounted for in the Sharia. The Sharia allows for that and has rules and regulations and systems to handle a person who is not in possession of their faculties. That doesn't cause a problem with medical insanity and it doesn't cause psychological insanity and it doesn't cause a problem with jinn possession either. Okay, there is another eye on around, around the same topic where mm. Allah says that nobody will be held accountable or bear the burden mm. of somebody else's action. And um, and again, that's perfectly, perfectly that valid. That makes sense in the Day of Judgment. Perfectly so, totally. valid that the shaitan is going to take account for what he did yeah. and the amount or the extent to which you followed, listened, didn't, uh, resisted, you'll also take account for that. You're mm. not going to be taking account for, for what the shaitan did. But I suppose right? my question is, what about in the dunya? For example, the shaitan has certain possession over myself. He makes me murder someone. I'm going to be held accountable for that in the mm. court of law. Again, I would say to that that um, it depends firstly on the court of law. Um, but also more than that, there is no real tangible difference between insanity regardless of the cause. You know, somebody, let's say, um, has a breakdown. Uh, a mental uh, breakdown and they reach a level where they're no longer conscious of what they're doing and they kill somebody. Islam accounts for that. Islam accounts for that. I don't see there to be any real issue with that. I think if you have an issue with that, you have to have an equal issue with somebody who does it under the influence of any uh, you know, cause of insanity. Someone else puts, I don't know, drugs in someone's coffee or something. You know, and This person goes out and does something that they weren't... It doesn't the court the ultimate cause of it doesn't really it's it's not the issue here the issue is that the Sharia has a, has a proper system in judging to account for that which is done by the person under their uh, you know own of their own free will and volition and we talked about al-aql and we talked about intellect and we talked about irada and having a will to do something um, at the end of the day when those things go away the person the Sharia has a separate. Mm way of looking at that situation. And I, I think if we have a problem with that from the point of view of gym possession, then we equally should have a problem when it comes to other medical and psychological issues that cause the same effect. And it, I mean, it really does depend on what, which court you end up hmm. in, in all honesty. So also, another yeah. person who's majnoon 
if he goes and drives a car, he's a majnoon, insane. He goes and he drives a car and he kills a person. The Sharia is not going to be like the 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 the, 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 mm. the blood money here is hadar. You know, sorry, you lost your family. Remember, the guy was majnoon. Rufa al qalam, the pen is lifted from him. No, he has to pay pay the blood money. It's a majnoon person. If his family got wealth and they've got money. Or even if he's wealthy mm. and he, there's money that's there for him from his, that he's inherited, that money's taken and he's paid for the the person he's killed. So it's not like those people's wealth goes. It has to. Be, I mean, but that again is a system, is something which applies regardless of the cause of insanity. It doesn't really need us to talk about jinn possession Sahar. as such. Okay, so you, you touch on the issue of mental health now. Are we saying that anybody that suffers from this kind of experience, mm. where they might be having a loss of it? Um, mental state mm. every time it's in possession let me let me quote you from al-imam ibn al-qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala he said sar'an there are two types of i'm going to use the word epilepsy for now just as an easy word but okay. you know fainting fits fitting there are two types of fitting sar'un min al-arwah al-khabitha al-ardiyya wa sar'un min al-akhlaq ar-radiya he said there are two types of fitting a fitting that comes from the evil, the khabith souls, the jinn that, that live on the earth. And a fitting which comes from akhlaat, a person's, would you say natural processes, mm. something like that. The, the, the natural components of the person's body not functioning properly. They're radia, they're not like, they're, not, they're, they're poor, they're, they're, they're not functioning properly. Wathani, huwa alladhi yatakallamu fihi al-atibba fi sababihi wa ilaji. As for the second one that comes from bodily, a breakdown of bodily functions, this is the one that the doctors speak about. As for the fitting that is caused by the jinn, they, the imams of the doctors and the intelligent ones among them, they admit that it comes from the jinn. He said later on, وَجَاءَتْ زَنَادِقَةُ الْأَطِبَّاءُ but the, the, the doctors who were Zanadiqa, you know, they were heretics. heretics yeah, they heretic doctors. F- they came along, فَلَمْ يُثْبِتُوا إِلَّا صَرَ الْأَخْلَاطُ وَحْدَ They only affirmed the, the uh, fitting which happens because of the body alone. وَمَنْ لَهُ أَقْلْ وَمَعْرِفَ بِهَذِي الْأَرْوَاحِ وَتَأْثِيرَاتِهَا يَضْحَكُ مِنْ جَهْلِ هَؤُلَا وَضْعْفِ أُقُولِهِمْ He said, Whoever has a has any brain, any intellect, and knows the situation of these souls, these jinn, and how they affect people, laughs at the ignorance of these people and the weakness of their minds. Mm. That's a quote from Ibn Qayyim in Zad al Ma'at. It's he, like it's hypothetical. It's actually sorry, not hypothetical. It's actually the Sheikh is that clearly saying there are a group of people who would say mm. anyone who comes to them with uh, uh, with 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 an illness. That it's mental health issues, you know. Our mm. modern day, mental, everything and anything. everything's mental health issue. Bipolar. That's yeah. the name that's coined for it. What's the other one called? Um, schizophrenia. schizophrenia. Yeah. These are the things that you're suffering from. They get coined it, and if you actually look at the definitions that are given each word, it's actually we don't know your illness. Let's just coin a term for it. Sometimes, sometimes, mm. let's just coin a term. We don't know what it is. It's a mental health issue, and let's just help you. I mean, I, I, I'll be very honest with you. I was having a, a discussion with family members. I was saying the concept of depression now. It's become a mental health issue now. So where, do, where, where, where does stress and sabr and endurance and, you know, hardship that you... لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها الله will not burden you than more than you can take. Mm. Where, how does this work with depression being a mental health issue now? Do, do, do you see yeah. my point? And... Anxiety and all these terms. I'm not undermining it. I'm not saying that it doesn't exist, mm. and I'm not saying that it does exist. I'm not firming nor negating it. Has science not proved that you can get chemical imbalances in the brain that co- uh, absolutely? Cause I, don't, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, I don't, I don't have an issue with saying that, that that exists. But the underlying cause. Let's just take depression. Depression as a. Uh, we have a lot of words for sadness. We have al huzn and al hazn, and we have al ham and al ghum, and we have a lot of different words for sadness. And, in the, in, in, that are used within the Quran and the Sunnah But here there are so many underlying causes What's the underlying cause of those chemical imbalances mm. in the brain? Is the underlying cause of that from the jinn? Is the underlying cause of that some personal experiences? Is the underlying cause of that something that Allah Azza wa decreed Without a sabab that we can okay. know of? At the end of the day 
we're not denying that there is such a thing as bipolar, for example, as, as, a, as a concept. Yeah. But we're asking the question, how many of those cases underlying that case is a issue with the jinni that can be seen, that can be mm. brought out, that can be understood? And how many times is it a regular case? That requires a large scale study and, and data that we don't really have access to. But the point is that we affirm, like Ibn al-Qayyim said, that there are two types of fitting. One that comes from a breakdown in, in the body, the organs and so on are not functioning properly. And the other one comes from the jinn and the arwah al khabitha okay. Whoever says that all of them came from, you know, all of it comes from nothing more than just your body's not handling something or not processing something properly. Like Ibn al-Qayyim said, he said, whoever knows about this in reality, يَضْحَكُ مِنْ جَهْلِ هَؤُلَىٰ He laughs at the ignorance of these people. Hmm. Okay, I've got two more issues. and I just want to wrap up this issue yeah, with. Um, the first is that we know that shaitan, his number one goal is to misguide us. Yeah. If he has the ability to possess us, to do more than whisper to us, why doesn't he just possess everybody and anybody and just misguide us from the mm. straight path? I think I, uh, what you mentioned earlier, the very beginning, and we'll go right back to the very beginning, and, and I spoke very briefly about the ghaib, and the shaykh had a couple of extra points. We talked about the qadr of Allah, Azzawajal. At the end of the day, let's just take one example. وَمَا هُمْ بِضَارِّينَ بِهِ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ It talks about the shayateen, it talks about sihr, and it talks What's about that, mean, sorry? that no one can harm, or they cannot harm anyone, إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Except by the permission of Allah, Azzawajal. that is his permission, which is his qadr, mm. which he has decreed for a wisdom, hikmatun baligha, a wiz, an infinite wisdom that, that is with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the, altar, at the end of the day, no one can uh, carry out any kind of action or any, make any kind of decision unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees for that to happen. So ultimately, this idea that the shaitan has a free reign yeah. to just possess anyone whenever he wants, that also goes against وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ I had no authority over you. The shaitan doesn't have the choice. And notice, I love that expression, and I don't know if we picked it on, the, on the, when we're quoting the ijma' on this issue, that the way they quote the expression, bi sultanillah, that it wasn't by right. the sultan of the jinn that that person became possessed, but it was by the sultan of Allah, okay. which by Allah's qadr and Allah's decree that that person became possessed, and not that the jinn just has a free reign to choose, let me possess, otherwise he would have possessed everyone yeah. on, the heavens, in the, in, on the face of the earth. I mean, your question is like, why don't serial killers kill every single person? I mean, they, 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 they don't want to kill people. Mm. So, <laughs> you know, but the, the, I think it's, the thing I, the Sheikh mentioned as well is that it's like the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, mm. like, and the Ummah which tamaa wa ala yin fa'ruka bi shayi lam yin fa'ruka illa bi shayi qad katabah Allah lak. Wa in ishtamaa wa ala yin dhuruka bi shayi lam yin dhuruka illa bi shayi qad katabah Allah lak. Rufi'at al aqalam wa jafat al suhuf. Everything happens bi mashiyat Allah wa qadri. But Allah wills and the way the qadr of Allah. No one can harm you. Except if it's written for you. Mm. And no one can benefit you unless mm. it's also written for you. Okay. So some of the scholars like Shaykh Islam Taim and others, they go into the concept of can the shaitan change forms as he wishes or is it something that, again, it's, it happens on occasional times for him. And things like, scholars spoke about these things, by the way. It's not like he'd just become a snake or an old man and beg you. It, also, these things, they don't happen because you would see jinns just popping up every day into our lives. Mm. And doing things mm. All of these things are Things we don't yet understand And inshallah maybe the day of judgment We might come to see all of these Where how they're happening it Comes back to uh, bil -ghayb. We believe mm. in the ghayb. We believe in the ghayb As it was told to us from the Quran and the Sunnah And what the Ummah agreed upon And had ijma' upon that's what, that's what we have We don't have more than that Okay I think it's been a, it's been a very beneficial episode. Um, I just want to wrap up by asking some closing questions. So you mentioned obviously that um, you, you brought a lot of evidences for the plausibility and, and the existence of gym possession. My question, I suppose, is what advice would you give to somebody right now who's maybe going through gym possession themselves? Mm. Okay, I think uh, it's it's very important to understand that there is no illness and no sickness except that Allah Azza wa Jal has given us a cure for it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us something that we can use to cure it. And since the jinn are from the world of the unseen, in general, we need a cure that also comes from that 
from 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 the things that are from the ghaib and from the unseen from Allah's revelation. And it is true that you can use some medical means, some things that fall under the topic of medicine. But in general, what is going to be effective against someone who is or for, for someone who is suffering from this is for them to go to Ruqya Shara'iya. I know that's another topic, yeah. it's a big topic. Allah Azza wa Jalla said, Quran uh, We sent down from the Quran that which is a shifa wa rahmatun and it's a mercy for the believers. So we're gonna so be this talking Quran, about it in more detail next episode. It's a shifa. And at the end of the day, a person needs to turn to Allah Azza wa Jalla. We talked about how the shaitan's control over a person is connected to their sins. Mm. So tawbah and turning to Allah and dua. Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq. Asking Allah to give you safety and refuge and protection from the evil that he created, from the jinn, from the men, from the people who blow, the women who blow on the knots, from the evil of the envier. All of these are evils that are related to evils of the jinn. Even the evil of the darkness when it spreads. When the darkness spreads at Maghrib, you have the intishar of the shayateen, the darkness in the month when there is no, the night of the month where there is no moon, where you have the, the time of the Sahara and the magicians. These are, these are all related to, to this, this asking Allah for refuge, proper ruqya shara'iyah as is evidenced by the Qur'an and by the sunnah of the Prophet But that is definitely, definitely a big topic for next time. Inshallah. For sure. This is something I know that you're involved in, in in your personal life. You've been doing it for many years, helping people overcome these problems. From your experience now, not necessarily from the evidences, but from your experience, are there any kind of sins that you see from the people that are more likely to result in jinn possession? I think every sin that a person does has a potential to cause damage to their heart mm. and a potential to distance them from Allah and to cause the shaitan to have a control over them. But the greater those sins are, the more likely it is. And I want to go back to what Ikrimah said when he said, Kan al min al ins. The jinn used to be scared of people. But what did the people used to say? The people of Sayyid al Qawm used to come and he used to say, Na'udhu bi Sayyidi hadha al Wadi. We seek refuge and seeking, they used to seek help from the jinn and refuge from the jinn and support from the jinn. Then, then they right. cause them insanity and possession and so on. So here you see that when they, one of the greatest ones has to be things relating to Tawheed and Shirk Billahi Azawajal. When those army, when the army marched into the valley, the jinn fled. When the army started making shirk with Allah and calling upon the jinn for refuge, the jinn started to afflict them. That's one set of things. But also, you know, the person being far away from that, we mentioned Ibn Qayyim, you mentioned Shaykh, being far away from the adhkar, far away from the means of protection, at taqwa, uh, the salah which protects them, the adhkar in the morning and the evening and before they go to sleep and the adhkar before, you know, saying before they go in the bathroom and, and uh, you know, before intimacy and so on. These are all things where there is a danger of the shaitan becoming, a, a touching and affecting a person. So for a person to be a person of tawheed, and remember tawheed is the greatest thing which protects a person. Safety, security, guidance is for the people of tawheed, the people who don't mix up their belief with making a partner with Allah. The, the prayer, at taqwa keeping away from the haram, being strict on the adhkar, having that relationship and reciting the Quran, these are all from the things which if a person does them, they drive away the shayateen. And if a person is far away from those things, then the person becomes at risk of being touched by the shayateen. You can add to that only that perhaps, you know, going and, and the person, you know, mixing in with the shayateen, like, and that could be through certain actions, like okay. um, an aff attraction to things like magic or, you know, Ouija boards and, you know, foolish things, card tricks and things like that, which involve the shayateen and, and playing with the shaytan and things like that people going to haunted houses and places of the jinn and things like that. Also, this person yani, should not blame anyone except themselves if they become afflicted by something, having put themselves into risk. And if we ask Allah to keep us safe, we have to ask Him by our tongue and by our actions and by our hearts. Mm -hmm. Because dhikr has to be with the heart and the tongue and the limbs. So the person's heart has to be sincere, asking Allah to protect them. And the tongue has to be asking Allah. But also you can't then ask Allah, protect me from the jinn and the shayateen and then go to the places of the jinn and the shayateen and start playing, trying to call sure. them. And 
what have you. So these are some of the things that come to mind and Allah knows there, best. There's something I wanted to also add to it, mm. which is Sheikh mentioned it, is that there's a surah in the Quran called Surah Al-Jinn. And subhanAllah, what is amazing is that in that surah, Allah Taala talks about those points that the Sheikh mentioned, which is, you know, following Allah's commandments, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and staying away from that which he prohibited you from. Allah says in Surah Al-Jinn, وَأَلَّوْ إِسْتَقَامُوا عَلَى الطَّرِيقَةِ لَأَسْقَيْنَهُمْ مَا أَنْغَدَقَ you know, If they were steadfast upon the path, Allah said we would provide for them, you know, we would send on them rains which are big drops, meaning we will give them a lot of crops and fruits and, you know, give them a good life, basically. There's a reflection, the rain is a reflection of what? A good life, healthy mm. life. Mm. Also Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says in that same surah, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا so, You know, to heed again, yeah. that don't associate partners with Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. It's also in that surah, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ وَعَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ فَلَا يُذِرُ عَلَى غَيْبِ أَحَدًا mm. yeah, Allah is the one who knows the unseen. The jinns are part of the unseen, but they don't know the unseen. Right. Mm. Uh, and it brings back to the ayah in Surah al Surah al Saba, where Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, وَلَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ وَاللَّهُ سَيْهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى يَعْمَلُوا آلَ دَاوُودَ شُكْرًا وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ فَلَمَّا قَضَيْنَا عَلَيْهِ الْمَوْتَ مَا دَلَّهُمْ عَلَى مَوْتِ إِلَّا دَابَةُ الْأَرْضِ تَأْكُلُ مِنْ سَأَتَهَا فَلَمَّا قَرَّتَ بَيَّنَتِ الْجِنُّ أَنْ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ الْغَيْبَ مَا لَبِثُوا فِي الْعَذَابِ الْمُهِينِ The jinns Sulaiman what he did he said that he took a stick and he went into his room of worship what he used to do is he used to go into a khalwa and he used to worship Allah tabarak wa ta'ala come out and this is what he used to do very often this is this is what was said and so they said one day, he knew he was going to die. The time of his death was close. And he wanted these people to work and not stop what they're doing. So he took a stick that he, and then he placed it on his uh, back and he stood up to pray. And then he died on it. Mm. He died on it. And then what they say, what they say is that he stayed in that way until what's the, the thing that eats wood. What's it called? Yeah, what? like the little... Little creature that eats yeah, wood. The little yeah, creature, like a little, little insect. Yeah. I'll tell you something funny about that. <laughs> so they eat, he ate, he ate the stick of Suleiman, and then when Suleiman fell on the floor, they realize he's dead. Allah says, Subhanahu wa Taala, if the فَلَمَّا خَرَّتَ بَيَّنَتِ الْجِنُّ when Suleiman fell down on the floor, they realized that he died. Allah then says in the ayah, لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ الْغَيْبَ if they knew the unseen, مَا لَبِثُوا فِي الْعَذَابِ الْمُهِينِ they would not have remained in the severe punishment of him telling them to work and do this work. They wouldn't have. They would have stopped. Yeah, you see. see? So we humans start to think that these jinns, they know everything. They know the unseen. They, so we go to them because of that. And then, of course, the ayah of um, They try to find out what's happening. Mm. They don't know the unseen. They lie. Just one of it. They get it right. The point is that these are three very important things Allah mentions in that verse. Wa istaqam, which is to stay away from sins, the concept of tawheed, and also the issue of Allah is the one who knows the unseen. Going back to this, the the the, the termite is it called? Term, yeah, term maybe term term like something like that. Like to you know, the termite eats a, a large, a large wooden uh, wardrobe sometimes, yeah. and the dust is not seen. Uh, right, right, yeah. So back on Sunday, I used to ask, how did he eat all of that, and where's the dust? Yeah. They said the jinn comes and they work together now because they became friends <laughs> after the issue of Suleiman. The jinn and the, they became close friends now because he helped him. They, he, he was the one who exposed the situation to them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, I think it's been a really comprehensive uh, episode of not just jinn possession but the jinn in general. I just want to thank you both for taking the time out. Um, um, I hope you enjoyed the, the episodes on jinn possession. Make sure you join us next week for another episode on the world of the unseen where we're going to be talking about magic Evil Eye and Rukia. In the meantime, if you have any questions on anything that we've discussed today, then as always, you can email us at questions at the hotseatpodcast.com. Until next time, fi amanillahi wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.